We've now used the Euler-Cromer method to examine several motion problems, and you should start to feel comfortable applying this method to various scenarios. A good question to consider is, how accurate are the results that this method produces? How do we know that the resulting animation and graph are correct? The key to controlling accuracy in an Euler-Cromer simulation lies in making sure that the step size is small. But how do you know if it's small enough? Let's examine this question by looking at a code that has a step size that is too large. This code is a modified version of our spring force code. In line 7, we're using a variable to specify the ball's initial height because we want to refer to this value later. In line 16, we've set the step size to be 0.1. Keep this value in mind while we run the simulation. We've also changed the while loop in line 19. Instead of checking for a certain value of time, the loop now repeats as long as the ball hasn't reached the bottom of its motion. This means that when we run the code, the animation will stop once the ball has completed half a complete period of motion. If we look at the graph for the simulation, it looks a bit suspicious. The points that make up this graph make very jagged turns, not the smooth curves we've seen in previous simulations. The total time that has transpired is 0.4. This is only four times the value of our step size, meaning we only get four data points on the entire graph. Our step size might be too large to accurately capture what should really be happening in this scenario. Returning to the code, our next step is to decrease the step size. It usually doesn't help to decrease the step size by a small amount. For example, changing the step size from 0.1 to 0.09 won't have much of an impact on our results. We still get the jagged graph and only a handful of data points. Instead of making small changes to the step size, we should change its order of magnitude, meaning change from 0.1 to 0.01. Changing a number's order of magnitude usually means multiplying or dividing by 10. Using the step size produces a much smoother graph, and note that it results in a greater value for total time. This result definitely looks more accurate, but how do we know it's good enough? Let's change the step size one more time to 0.001. By the way, notice that every time we shrink the step size, our simulation takes longer to run because we're asking the computer to perform more calculations. The graph looks a little smoother, and we do get a different value for the total time, but the change isn't nearly as drastic as the last time. Let's try reducing our step size one more time to 0.0001. At this point, we should also change the frame rate value to speed up the simulation. Notice that the change in the final result is minuscule. In general, this procedure is useful for determining how to make your simulation step size. Keep decreasing until you no longer see a significant change in the result. Remember, there's no point in making your code run significantly longer for an insignificant gain in accuracy. Of course, your instructor or research mentor might have a more specific idea of what counts as accurate enough, so be sure to check with them as you make these comparisons. You should now be able to evaluate the accuracy of your Euler-Cromer method by varying the step size. Follow the link in the description below to use this code to apply the Euler-Cromer method for the following forces and initial conditions and identify an appropriately small step size. In the next video, we'll look at how we can check our results by evaluating the total energy in the system.